Yeah, and Sean's so plain. It. It's just, you know, that's, but that's why I hung out with him because yeah. everywhere we went, he'd get everyone talking to us and he'd just like own the room. Really? And I was like shy and anxious a little bit when I was a teenager. It's like, and man's just like, oh, I'm here. It's like P. Diddy and Notorious <laughs> B.I.G. sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. We have a very similar thing going <laughs> yeah. um, So, how, how did these meet, lads? We grew up together in Witness. Yeah. We were just uh, school kids, wasn't we? Growing up, you're three years older than me, aren't you? I was in a little gang with his brother who was the leader and his cousin Hammy and they wouldn't let Peter join mm-hmm. and they used to beat him up and stuff, his brother was cruel to him and um, in the end I splintered off with Wildman. What made you think he was the better option to hang out with at the time, do you remember? We just had like this good, this connection, didn't we? we were like buzzing off his um, boombox playing Bronski beat, hanging out in the gay area of Manchester, yeah. going like the early dance music stuff together. Oh. And that led to us starting to rave together, didn't it? Well, yeah, when, like most of our mates were going to the pubs and all that. We were jumping in the Talbot and we were going to like the Hacienda and we were going to the raves and all that. What? And we just got used to it. What? what just because uh, these are names that a lot of people won't know because yeah. they are uh, eight. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, seriously though, uh, Hacienda, Talbot, things like that, they were uh, massive rave place well so the so Talbot was Ender. my little car You're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so you, you go in your little Talbot to yeah. the Hacienda yeah, the and Hacienda. you basically get into this huge club it opens out and bam yeah. you're in the rave scene yeah well pe- most people our generation were sat in the pubs drinking you know fighting outside nightclubs right we started doing that at an early early age but I didn't want to leave the hometown but me and Wildman were like we've got to get the fuck out of here and explore so we go out, go to the cities, wouldn't we? Liverpool, mm. Manchester, down to um, Coventry, Stoke, yeah, Coventry, yeah, Clips. Clips Club. Yeah. Were they famous places at that time? Because Stoke and Coventry don't sound. They don't sound. They like were huge yeah. back then. Right. Convoys so thick on the motorway, you couldn't even. You could see it from that end. To what that did you end. like about the raves? What What was it in particular that got it in you? Because when I got to places like that, it's like. There's too many fucking people. Everyone's jumping around your face. What did you love about that? All right, well, back then... Fit half naked birds, for one. Is that You're going to the right way. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Sold. Back then, the dance music scene was, you went to a nightclub, you had your shirt and tie on, bouncers looked down at you, and maybe wouldn't even let you in. Kids were sick of it. All of a sudden, they're smashing open warehouses, breaking into airplane hangars, people are coming in with all this equipment and throwing these illegal parties. It was like a revolution in music back then. Right. All over the news, showing all these kids with the big eyes on the ecstasy. Yeah. And then um, the police and the government were like, oh, you know, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. We, what are we gonna do about these people? We were like, we want a piece of that, weren't we? It was before it got all organized. So it was like, literally you walk up to a place, it's like an old scrapyard. And they open the door and there's two guys there and they've got like no big dogs and they've got literally like as the bags and you just throw your ten pound in and just bagfuls of money and these big dogs. And when the police come, they, they just set the dogs on you. Just let the dogs go and you just gotta run, otherwise you're gonna get your ass bit, you know what I mean? It was a bit of a buzz, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, it was yeah. like, you know. You never f- you wonder if you're gonna get arrested at the end of the night and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. I was sick of doing the pubs scene and all as well. I was banned from most of the pubs, to be honest with you. Why, why is that? Being an arsehole fighting. Really. And then so going to the <laughs> nightclubs and then always getting kicked out of the nightclubs and the bouncers are always like chicken wing me three or four of them yeah. and throw me out. And then yeah, it's like, fuck it, I'm going to start fighting about you bastards. See, he's always painted you out to sort of be a violent man. Oh. Do you think <laughs> that's a fair statement? No, not really, no. I, I just... I, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> He's laughing right in your face. Have you seen all the teeth marks on no, his knuckles? To be fair, his hands look like they've had a few. <laughs> <in there. laughs> they look like they'd be perfect for just pounding meat in a butcher shop. You know I had to put my wedding ring on today. My mum said, if you go down London without your wedding ring on, I'll get a divorce. Yeah. So I've got it on wife. Okay. Well, it, started, it started in his school when he got bigger than everybody, didn't he? And the teachers put him outside raking the leaves. The teachers were so scared of him. Really? Yeah, well, basically what they did was... They, I think one of them was threatening me and all that, the teacher called Mr. Hayes, so I threatened to put him in. Right right near where the uh, canteen is there, they had these big bins where they put all the slop. So I was gonna throw him in the slop. So the, the, I had to go to the headmaster, and then the, the headmaster's like, he had this like traffic light, light thing on his door where it was like red, mm-hmm. wait. Uh, no, it was red, do not enter. Um, amber, 
please wait and green go in mm-hmm. and i'm waiting to go and see the headmaster and like by this time me mum and him were just like best of friends first name terms every friday she's down there having a cup of tea what we're gonna do with your peter oh just give him one more chance will you we're gonna have to do something with him he's running rampant blah 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 mm-hmm. and then in the end they I got um, I kicked his door down because he kept me on he kept me on red he kept me on night no don't go in so I booted his door and it just come off the hinges but what I didn't know he was having like a staff meeting and all the teachers were there so I got suspended indefinitely for that and what they did is they got me a private tutor from 9 o'clock to 11 and I just did English and math and then I could go back home mm-hmm. and after 6 months they let me back in school and I got into a fight with a couple of guys and then that was it then. They just said, look, if you want to stay doing exams, you can help the caretaker out. So that's what I did. I helped the caretaker out. When all of the kids were going to the chippy, getting the chips, I was going to the pub having an ass, uh, what was it called? A low C, like right. the bottles of lager. Right. I was going to the pub having a low C. So, I mean, I didn't get no qualifications. I could have as well. I mean, I knew a lot of the stuff, but I just... I wasn't motivated, I was the class clown. Mm-hmm. It's like, and there wasn't really a lot of stuff I really liked. Nothing would actually motivate me. I'd rather, Subject wise? Yeah, I'd rather disrupt the class. I'd rather be just the class clown, just be an arsehole, really. You two are in the same school? No. No. Right, no. okay. So you can't really, you can't uh, say right or wrong about his experience, but your experience of him as a teenager, was he someone who was a bit of a fire starter in one sense? Well, we should probably tell you about the red dots. <laughs> Go uh, on. I'll let him tell you. Thanks for that, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, it's just I, I, when I started getting into the fights with the doorman and all that, mm-hmm. I just used to have. It's not so much red dots. I think it was just anger. But you know, like you, you just like glaze over, and there's no. A lot of people have a stop. Like a stop mechanism, they know the guys had enough. But no, I just like glaze over and I just don't talk, pummel the shit out of him, pummel the shit out of him. Until I'm getting dragged off and then I'll fight with them. Then I started having to go to magistrates court for like ABHs and stuff like that. And in the end it started as the like when I got to like 16, 17. So I was going to clubs clubs at 16. As I started getting older, the charges started getting worse and worse and worse. So decided to start going the, the raves instead to take a pill and chill out so that's what I did and it, it did work you're not fighting raves I mean later on it got moody it started getting worse you'd get gangsters well wannabe gangsters coming and trying to rob pills and all that right. but at the very beginning it was just refreshing it was nice there was no one in your face there was no one like fucking trying to pick a fight or you, no one had to prove anything you know what I mean you just took a pill and had a laugh why do you think people picked on you in the pub side or did you feel that people picked on you or do you think you sometimes went out looking for a bit of a rap? a bit of both really a bit of both I mean I did go out my way looking for it too like but I didn't necessarily go in the pub and cause a fight right but I'd end up like and to be honest with you most of the fights I had I never really had many one on ones it was always a couple of them trying to jump on me would you say you had a reputation so if someone saw you they'd be like that's I'd that definitely guy have a reputation yeah because even if two or three of them done me in the next week I'd pick them off one by one I'd get the right. bastards you know what I mean so you know how like you said that you'd see the the rage sort of thing come over you yeah like for me like I've got a little bit of that sometimes where when I lose it it's just it all bets are off like there's just no that can sort there's of no, there's no senses there. there's no like it takes us a while to come back to fucking reality yeah do you know what I mean because you're just in that place but like is there a reason that you're like that do you think like when you that started or has it just always been there do you think in you I think it's always been there in me really um I, I, I don't actually know I was never like mistreated as a child mm-hmm. or I had a good upbringing or all yeah. that my older brother was an asshole. you know what I mean? Uh-huh. He hit me over the head for having a fucking wank. <laughs> fucking hell. I'd be having a fucking toss and he'd come in with a broomstick and twat me. Mm. Well, he probably had a bigger dick than him, that was all, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, I just think it was, I always stuck out. I was always ahead above people. Like when I was 16, I was like two, six foot two, 16, 16 hour yeah. stone. And he was fighting like, bouncers by then. I, I yeah. saw him remember what, you were black and blue one time, like a train had hit him. Really? Oh. At 16, yeah, I was doing yeah. like size 38 Farrah's, fucking like, you know, 
extra extra large Ben Sherman's so it was like yeah. I'd go out to the clubs and, and bouncers would kick me out not for being underage either but we'd just get into it with them and you know you'd just, you'd just I didn't like bouncers to be honest with you I just oh. didn't like them it was just something about them their attitude <clears throat> the way they like they get you and they like chicken wing you so that you know and just throw you down the fucking stairs yeah I got to stage where I thought I'll fucking wait for you you bastard find out where you live I'll have you and then I thought I'll get in trouble here being like this, you know what I mean? What motivation is that though? What 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 do you think it is that like motivates you to be that way? Because you you get almost zero benefit from doing that. No, not I mean? at all. But that, I mean, I didn't really put much thought into it. Right. It, I didn't. It, I mean, it wasn't even enjoyment. I didn't get enjoyment or anything out of it. It was just. I suppose I was crying for attention somehow. You know, I think it was sick of fucking sick of just being not like people being normal and like just sick of I wanted to be a little bit different yeah that's what struck me a little bit about that yeah. that, that story is that it seems like you you're you, almost that's not, where you connected wasn't yeah. it yeah you both wanted to get the fuck out of witness and yeah. not be the same as every but other he's very yeah, sensible exactly. about it yeah. he want, like, he's sensible about it he had a plan basically What's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have much of a relationship with your dad I uh, got home with my dad yeah he, he like um was he a fighter like you are? No, 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 no. He'd, um, he'd nag a lot at me, my dad, uh-huh. because he'd get in from work and my mum would be like, he's been fucking up to this and he's been fucking doing that. Uh-huh. So he'd come here and I'd get a belt around the fucking head, you know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah. I didn't really resent him for that, to be honest with you. I'd have, I'd have kicked my ass too. Yeah. <laughs> Did he just try to do, like, just whip you into shape sort of thing and keep yeah. you on the right road? Well, in the end, it was, it was just enough. They, they, they were arguing that much. It could have come, like, next to the divorce. Mm. I left at 16. And then, by the time I was 17, I was with a bird and she was pregnant and I was living in the house working at a place called the Crispy the Golden Wonder they call it the Crispy because it is just literally making crisps right Golden Wonder crisps I remember those they're not around anymore no they? they're not around no more they were yeah. fucking decent they were, good <laughs> they were really <laughs> decent yeah. you knew that if you saw another kid get Golden Wonder out their lunchbox you were like you're having a good day <laughs> the best thing about that fucking job was you'd get paid 80 fucking quid which doesn't sound fuck all well it's more than a gyro now but it doesn't sound fuck all but every payday you'd get like a big box of 48 crisps <laughs> and they're giving me for £2.50 no. that's the best thing about that job and you got you got your wage packet like a little brown envelope you know what I mean yeah. money mate I used to work with butchers and uh, every Sunday I'd get like big fucking joint and a few fucking sausage rolls and that I'd be like, like you can't go wrong with that can you win win you two should have teamed up with that yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 how much for your crisps and beef alright um, so you you got a girl pregnant here yeah I got a girl pregnant you sound quite immature with like in that story that you're telling like not ready for that yeah. situation so how did that fucking feel like it it settled me down for a bit mm-hmm. but it went me wrong real quick because mm-hmm. then I felt I was missing out on things then you know I, I, yeah. I'm sitting at home with this woman and she's pregnant and I haven't got money to go anywhere I haven't even got money to go in a pub and have a fight get into a fight or get into trouble or do anything and just getting nagged at and just like Paint this, decorate this, do that. Well, you get a job. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. So if you're having a kid or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just didn't work Pe- out. People like you, like, they're, they're, this is not, no disrespect, mate, but like, I feel like they're not made for that fucking structure, especially not at that age. No, like, no. You're supposed to be on a fucking battlefield in a kilt swinging an axe. <laughs> yeah. like, You'd be the king's bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like you were born in the wrong age. Because when he's telling me these stories, you think, right now, that doesn't fit into society, yeah. but in like the 15 You would have been effective as fuck. Yeah. 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 Your village is getting attacked. Yeah. He's first out. He's first out. Yeah, yeah. Come on, it's like saving life, basically, isn't it? Yeah, Mish off a fucking Braveheart and shit like that. Um, So, uh, were you in his life around this time? Were you when this was happening? So I'm like trying to like get my studies done, my degree done, and stuff like that around this time. Uh We're rave partners. So on the weekends, I'm doing my raving with Wild Man, getting down to my studying on the weekdays, and I'm seeing how volatile it is and what's going on in this country with him. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to go to America get rich in the stock market, fly Wildman out and get him a job as a wrestler so we can channel this aggressive energy. Vince McMahon's game. Love it. <laughs> so that was the master plan. That was the structure yeah. I was going to put on him. But as you mentioned about structure and Wildman, it doesn't quite work. Uh, so, so, so what happened next sort of thing, lads? Like, well, um, so...